Oh. Holy shnikes. We were scared. We suck. <laughs> I'm so look, she's so pretty. I know she's beautiful. I know. Thank it's you. like you're being interviewed by Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> I'm sorry. <gasps> but I'll be the dumber one. Thank you. So Stephanie. Yes. I mean, first of all, everyone needs to know why I'm out of sorts. Can we just talk about this for a second? So okay. my dog, Chloe, who we all know, ran away mm. and I'm, I'm sweating because I don't do cardio, as we know, and which is a problem. And I'm running around the neighborhood chasing her. And she's doing this. You know, she's doing that thing. What I love is you tried the reverse psychology on the dog. Like, okay, I'm going. I know, I, I I'm did. I'm leaving. Like, the dog is going to all of a sudden go, oh, no, mommy. Please. Like, oh, crap. Like, and she just was like, and she was running towards this house where a pit bull is. And I was like. This might be the day where they meet. This is not the day that not they, day. but speaking of yeah. love at first sight and meetings. Do I do mm -hmm. good? Segment? Nice. Segment. Oh, great. Thank segment. you. Nice segment. So welcome to the crazy hour. And we are so happy to be interviewing Stephanie Lee. Oh, by the way, my name is Erin Saxton. Oh, by the way, my name is Jen Urizio. <laughs> and I'm Erin Saxton. No. <laughs> I'm Erin. This is Jen Urizio. And Jen's a relationship soul, soul expert. I just am really good at being single. And I just found the love of my life. And I'm in a great relationship. And Stephanie asked me, we were together on our marketing for this book a while ago. And I was like, Steph, this is going to be awesome. And all kidding aside, I was really excited when you called me, Steph, to interview you on this, this, <laughs> the, the epicenter <laughs> of all that's great. So, um, welcome to your Thank show. You. <laughs> Thank you. How's your day been going? It's your big book launch day. It's been booked, busy and booked. So that's a blessing. I've had very little time to do anything. So that's a good thing. Cause I've been talking well, to people all day and talking about the book and sharing kind of everything about it. So I'm excited. Awesome. So let's talk about your book. Tell everyone your title, the where they can get it, the all it. Like just theme. get right that out right from the start. Okay, so the name of the book is called "Successfully Single: Choice or Destiny." Um, you can get it on the website I am successfully um, I am successfully me .com or on Amazon. Um, it's a play on words, so it's geared towards pe people desiring to be in a relationship. Um, but ideally, when we hear "successfully single," we think, oh, I'm successful, I'm single. And so the play on words that we've gotten so um, good at being successfully single that we get in the way of maintaining or even getting into relationships. The play on the tagline, choice or destiny, means if we do the personal work, because it all comes back to self. So it's about the relationship aspect with yourself that can lead to other things. If we do the personal work, then successfully single becomes a choice. But if we don't do the personal work, then it becomes destiny. So that's kind of like there's a double entendre within the title as well as the tagline. I love so, that yeah. because, yes. you know, the moment that I found my person was the moment I went, okay, I am okay if I'm never going to have that person. And I think all of the internal work and a little help from you, all of the internal work landed me, my person, but I was prepared to go, okay, I'm good. I'm good internally. I'm good where I am. And that's okay. So what, what is kind of a, a tip right here, right now that you can share with people to start them on that pathway of like the inner relationship so they can start that process so they can move towards their destiny? There's so many things that come to mind. You know, earlier I had mentioned the idea of being honest. I think that we're not always honest with ourselves. You know, we've gotten so used to the rhetoric that we tell ourselves that we believe it. And so when, instead of so focusing on the things that make us great, which is wonderful, let's really kind of stand naked in the mirror and say, here are the things that are really causing me to continue to suffer. Part of what's in the back of my book is like a mini workbook. So there are aspects of it that ask about you, um, possible partners. There are questions that I go into about family, like watching our you know, family argue, how we were taught to watch our parents argue, how we were taught to deal with conflict as a child. A lot of those things 
um, are really beneficial to help us get to the point where we start realizing what we need to work on. Because there's so many other factors that we can't control. But the one thing that we can control is our own relationship with ourself. And then from that, everything else kind of is attracted to us. I love that. So um, why did you create the book? Like, what was that journey like? And, you know, how did, I mean, did you wake up one day and like, let's do it? Or was there a process about why you took this? It's a huge step to write a book. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. I think a lot of people want to write a book, but they're just... afraid and they don't know how or they don't think they have the, the right idea. So before we talk about the concept of the book, what made you want to write the book? Yeah, I want, I want your journey. Because I, you know, I think that's so attractive for people to understand that you're just not an expert, but you've taken the journey. Yeah, she just celebrated her one year anniversary. Yay! Marriage. Yeah. Thank you. Yay. Um, so my husband does international masterminds and he was doing a mastermind at the time and I, at the time we were we were dating and so I was taking part of it and first of all being around like-minded people so that's with anything when you get in inside of the energy of people who are on the same page and who are driven to create a better sense of self and you commit to that as well that's the space that you operate in. So I was kind of swimming in that space, you know, I was taking more time to drown out stuff. So this idea hit me literally as I was driving and I turned everything off. So nothing was on and that was a moment in time that I chose based on the people that I was spending time with. Let, let's take more time for ourselves and not drown out our thoughts. So as I was driving, this idea came to me because my friends and I are always talking about that. We're always talking about relationships. It's the foundation of, you know, humans. And so, you know, we're always talking about relationships. At the time, I, you know, was, I was kind of going through the whole single girl world, single as in not married. And I had been there and done that years before that. And it's the constant conversation because it's a, it's a need. I think we're getting a little jaded where people are saying, you know, you don't need a relationship or you're fine by yourself. And we're making people feel bad about desiring to connect, which is such a natural thing. So just being in that headspace, the idea just came to mind out of nowhere. I can't really even explain that moment. I remember the moment, but I can't really explain why it came to me the way that it came. But I said, hey, why? What, what about if we're so comfortable in our dysfunction that we continue to allow us get in the way of the very thing that we want. And so the whole idea of the play on words came and, you know, later on, I'll talk about kind of how I created the book, but I wanted it to be something where people could enjoy it and be receptive with their defenses down. Cause that's another thing we're not, you know, with the whole therapy thing and mental health, we're still associating negative things with that, idea of therapy or expert or anything like that. So I wanted to kind of create a space where people could really enjoy watching somebody else's journey, but it'd be realistic enough for people to say, hey, that's me, or hey, that's my friend, you know, and we can have a realistic conversation, especially with us as women, because um, men just are so much easier to have that conversation and then they go about their business. And women, we need a little more delicate. So it's true. <laughs> yeah. It's true. And I like the way you wrote the book that you we were discussing this morning. And, you know, however, if you want to go into that in detail, because I, I know a lot of our audience liked it this morning, but there's there's a handful of characters and some are shy, some are saucy, some are sexy, some are, you know, promiscuous, some's a mistress. Like, so what I liked about it when I read it is I, I immediately kind of just looking at we all kind of want to connect right so we're all a little bit narcissistic i mean healthy wise we're all on our own right. channel i mean you know we have yeah. cameos on other people's channels but we are the master of our universe we might as well accept it namaste yes. okay so anyway so when we go into like i mean honestly like Sweet. what mountain have you climbed lately no, I'm... <laughs> um <laughs> all right so anyway no, but I, I'm kidding. I oh, I know. So, so, but when you read it, I automatically was like, oh, maybe I'm her. Maybe I'm her. I automatically wanted, and I don't know why, because everybody, if you're in the book, it means you have an issue with relationships. So I don't know why I wanted to identify with one of them. But being that I was single when I read it, um, well, I read the galley part of it, but, um, I, you know. Well, you want to move into a healthy relationship. So you kind of want to understand where you're falling down in that process. Yeah. And, you know, probably 
we're not just one type, we're a mixture of all of them. And then we get Absolutely. to go, okay, so, wow, I really resonate with flirty girl, you know? And why'd you call that one out? I like it. <laughs> and I didn't call out the mistress. I mean, come on. That's just not true. <laughs> I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I know. So that allows me to go identify and go, okay, yeah, let's see. And then you, you feel a deeper sense of compassion for yourself because you understand you're not alone. Right. And I think that's the biggest thing with starting really good connections is understanding that you can feel safe being vulnerable, that you can start this road of connect connection. And we need those modelings to help us along the way. Absolutely. And I do um, the show Married at First Sight. I started doing reviews and kind of offering like free advice, essentially, in the review, because what I wanted to do was bridge the gap between entertainment and real life. And I got a lot of that feedback because so often we watch something or we read something and it's them over there like, oh, my God. And we're super judgy about what they're doing, what they're not doing completely oblivious to the fact that we're actually doing the same thing, if not worse. So I wanted yeah. to create this characters that had, had enough similarity to where you can identify with several of them. Um, but it wasn't necessarily you. But hey, if the character Diane struggles with this, and I do the same thing, that's going to trigger me subconsciously that, okay, maybe I need to work on that as well, but still in a safe place because it's in the frame of, of entertainment or my own personal reading time or my own personal workbook at the end of it where, you know, I don't necessarily have to divulge that aspect of me until I want to, so. Let's talk about um, who you are in the non-book world, right? So you're an author, but you're also a therapist, and so she has creds, and so, you know, <laughs> she... She is, doesn't play a doctor on TV. She has cred. Right. <laughs> Which is important because if you're going to create this real world within a fictional world, then you want it. So you're leading people down a path that they can actually yeah. expand and improve, you know, rather than being in all of your own personal stuff as an author. I think it's amazing that you have the creds. And I, and I think that adds real depth to the book yeah so brag a little tell us just tell us how smart you Give are us the digits. The digits um okay oh my I'm god you're so 40 and white <laughs> she is i'm almost 50 and white you're really <laughs> almost 50 and white she said digits oh my god that's hold hilarious. up hold up okay so I'm a lifestyle mastering and relationship expert. I have my master's in psychology. I have my professional certification in addiction. I have a life coaching certification. I've worked with various populations, including the severely mentally ill um, addiction population, um, what we would identify as average, kind of just wanted ch wanting change. I've done marriage and family. Um, currently, I work with children with mood disorders. But it varies. It can be adults, but adults who operate at that mood disorder diagnosis often mimic children. So, um, <laughs> so there's a lot of, I've got a client for you. <laughs> uh, wow. That's a lot of experience and a lot of history and yeah. a lot of wisdom and education. Thank so, you. you know, the workbook section of this book, must be incredible because all of that education, wisdom, and experience is loaded into that section. Yeah, no, absolutely. How do you get the workbook? Like, do you get the workbook when you buy the book and it's all one or just walk us through that? Yes. So I have the book here. I know it looks backwards on here, which is why I'm not going to show it too much, but the workbook is more of like an intro type of thing. So I am developing a full workbook, but I wanted to just add some things because here it is. Part one introduces you to this cast of characters. Part two transitions you to um, a live you know, conference where I get to engage and coach each client. Um, and they get to kind of semi interact with each other, but I still wanted to include just a little bit of inner self work. So I have, um, you know, something called me, myself and I. So these questions are designed to increase the depth of relationship with yourself. I have perfect pairing. So I have questions that prompt the idea of what you're looking for in somebody else. 
Um, I have a self care log. I have 20 ideas for self care. Wow. Um, I have um, I am statements. And some of the questions include, like I was saying earlier, you know, conflict resolution within your parents and what you saw, conflict resolution within your siblings. Because a lot of times we say, oh, you know, this is what my parents did. Well, what did they teach you to do? And a lot of the first people that you mimic relationships with are your brother and sister. Yeah. So there are a lot of fears that I think we know, but we don't really always hyper focus on that can make a really big, you know, change. So are there questions in the workbook too for those individuals who didn't have siblings? Oh, that's a great question. Um, Thank you. No. No, it just, you can kind of skip that question because it's just really those questions are conflict resolution with parents and or siblings. So if it's not, then it just, it, if it doesn't apply, let it fly type of thing. But it's not too heavily focused on that to where it would deter you. Are you still there? We missed you here. Okay. Okay, good. I can hear you now. Oh, that was so weird. You were frozen. No. Yeah. There we are. Dear Lord. Technical <laughs> issues. Um, you know what it is? I'm getting, I'll tell you exactly what it is. I am getting so many pings. Right. I'm and wondering. then, and then they're like, add me, add me, invite me, invite me. And I love my friends that they think I can walk and chew gum and do this interview <laughs> and invite people. So, you know, multitasking. So, um, sorry about that. You guys are still frozen on my end, but I'm just, I can still hear you. So I'm just going to continue to respond. Okay. okay. You're not frozen on ours. So we're good. Um, so when, when people, you know, read this book, what do you think are like the main three things that they're going to take away from reading and, and really diving into this book? Okay. So what I would like love for people to take away is a connection with one of the characters. Um, just because that is kind of bringing the walls down and identifying with an aspect of yourself that maybe you haven't wanted to identify with. Um, so kind of, you know, connecting with these characters and saying, hmm, you know, she's similar to me or maybe she's not similar, but I've done that before and really getting them thinking about what's going on with themselves, that would be one. And it would lead into the second thing, which is being honest. You know, like we have this facade, we create these facades, we show up on social media in a certain way, but just take the quiet, small space and be still with yourself and just be honest. And it doesn't stop when you're in a relationship, you know, and that's a completely different conversation. Um, but because I know there's like a single girl like, well, what happens when you're married? You know, and like it, there are different set of circumstances where when you're married. But, um, you know, having an honest conversation about what's tripping you up or maybe, you know, a trauma that has resulted in a, in a blockage some type of way. It doesn't have to be like a particular thing, but just being honest about recognizing how whatever that thing is um really impacts your day-to-day -day in your relationships and then the third i'd really want people to get something out of answering those questions i believe that there's a really powerful thing that happens when we write things down you know like we've seen in you know biblical scriptures and you know various religions and you know the secret and all these things that kind of reaffirm the power of writing things down and really setting our intentions and so part of you know, why I added that is for people to take that time to really process things on their own, to see things and to start to do the work in whatever way they can at their own pace. So. So we talk about lists, but so I, I have some experts that were like, well, write down exactly what you want in a man. Right. Or, or uh -huh. and so I, I was like, that just seems a little unrealistic. And they're like, no, no, you got to put it out there. You got to manifest it. So I wrote it down. 
And then I thought, well, what the hell? Let, let's have him play the guitar. Like, I mean, I don't know. I, I was like, you know, what what should he do? I have no idea. Like, where does he live? And I, I just felt it it was so cerebral and yet nothing about the process. Like, so do, are you a fan of manifesting the man of your dream? Like, and I'm no offense to any of our friends, no old dear Lord, that that say that. But realistically, right. I had 98 things on my list. I didn't care much about all of them. I threw out the right. list and I had just a paragraph. Yeah. And it was really right. what I really needed. Yeah. And one of the top things, and and it was so clear to me from all the internal work, was that I really wanted to spend my time laughing with this individual. Like I was mm -hmm. tired of the work in relationships. I was tired of carrying the ball. Oh. And besides her, Warner's the only person that can make me laugh at myself and laugh when I don't even want to laugh. I know. Yeah. And, you know, and that was a lot of internal questions that I had to ask, like, you know, what do I really need? Right. What, what's going to fill me up? Where have I been, you know, thinking I wanted something? And I really didn't want that. That was just programming in history. So I love that you have these questions that can help people work through that process, yeah. especially when it comes to dealing with heritage beliefs and from their parents and conflict. That's huge. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. It, and will impact all relationships, not just that intimate uh, relationship. Absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, I have um, a question regarding the five non-negotiables and that's kind of what I work on. I think I'm a big fan of manifestation. I love doing processes. Same. I just did one a couple of nights ago. So all that stuff is great, but like, let's, you know, I'm a realist. So do we need a hundred things on a list? No. no. Like, what are the, you know, cause really when it comes down to it, you know, when you see people struggle in relationships, they only say like a couple of things that would really turn that relationship around. Right. So I say there are five non-negotiables and you're allowed to have non-negotiables. Um, yeah really, really need to have. And I would prompt people to look at the, the life you want. Don't like bullet point. He has to be this. He has to be that. Look at like the experience of the life that you want and think about what person would provide that experience or would engage in that experience with you. I think people take it a little too far when they get way too granular because relationships <laughs> require a lot of flexibility you have to be malleable in various times in various ways and so you might meet someone who really measures up and is a stand-up guy but if you're way too committed to this list that's part of your problem and that's one of the characters um one of the characters is a list girl and yeah she gets in her own way by having to have all of these things where yeah some of that stuff you absolutely should expect or you should demand and then that other stuff you have to really realize okay you know, are you willing to trade the life that you want or the experience of the love that you want for something that really at the end of the day is somewhat minute? So I love the whole idea of manifestation and the list, but I say stick to five non-negotiables. So yeah. how does someone determine their non-negotiables? Like, what is that process that they come up, can come up with those five things? Because a lot of people don't really understand what they want. And they don't understand what's non-negotiable. And I think they just fall into old habits. One, one quick mm -hmm. thing about the list. So, and I shared that my, I had 98. But so what mm -hmm. I did it, though I thought, oh, why am I doing this? But it, first of all, it got a little silly for me with the list because right. I'm 48 years old, divorced, 13 year old son. So what's on my list? Like loves kids, um, isn't a racist. Like I went for core Moral nice. thing, right. and then after I'll say I hit ten of like really like I have friends from all different cultures, all different like everyone loves everybody. So to me, you can't be that guy, that Mister mm -hmm. Opinionated, if you're gonna hang out in my world. Right. Like we will eat you alive in the Saxton. Right. Not house. only that, but not only that, but you, you would feel uncomfortable, right, all of the time, right, bringing him around. Your, it just would be it, sad. It would be, it, I would uh -huh. feel badly for him. So, so basically, I got myself down to five, and mostly it was I could have just calmed it, like cut it down even more. About just you have to, this person has to be really kind to people, and yeah, you and me, 
which was always my issue, right? I always, yeah, I, I still, anyway, whatever, let's keep talking. So, um, but I did find somebody that yeah. is great. So, okay, non-negotiables now, and that's not your mom's non-negotiable. That's yours. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Like yeah. in-laws, moms, w like what they think you need and what you think you need. And sometimes they're right, but sometimes yeah. they're wrong. How do right. you know what is your non-negotiable or what you think your mother would want you to be with who you would want well i mean i think the non-negotiables come from one of two things so they come from what you know you don't want you know if, if if you hate smoking and you could never deal with it then that's cerebral you know you don't want that and then it comes from the experience of something oh god i'm not doing that again like mm -hmm. so i'm definitely the, you know, not, I've been there, done that, bought the t-shirt, and I'm, that's just not something that I can live with. Um, yeah. I think as a chore, you know, it's a maturity thing, because I've watched people struggle um, straddling the fence with what they want versus what their family may want, and I think that parents specifically, they definitely always have the best interests at heart, but they are not you, and they're not always right for you and what type of life you want. So you have to learn to navigate what you can and can't live with, you know? Um, a lot of old school parents want you to have a certain type of guy, and if that's not something that you desire, or if maybe that type of guy is not the guy that you want to build the type of life that you want with, then that's when you learn that that's something that you you take with a grain of salt you know with everything with parents is kind of like a respect thing but you just definitely have to know how to set boundaries because i see i've seen people struggle with trying to please themselves and please their family and i think that we all have our own life to live so yeah you you can't trade the experience of the life that you want because your mom or your dad thinks that you should do X, Y, Z, because when it's just you and this person and these four walls, mom and dad and uncle and aunt and who, you know, friends, none of them are building this life with you. It's only this well, person. So you have let's to hope not. Them. I've dated some people, honestly, that they still live with their parents and grandmother. So, yeah. We, well, no, I that, like even I like, didn't know it, that like, when they got on the date, <laughs> but I got on the date and he breaks it to me that he lives with his grandmother. I'm like, that's not sexy. No, no. So well, listen, we've gotten a that. bunch of we've gotten a bunch huh? of new viewers. So how do they get your book? Oh yes, they um you can get my book at IamSuccessfullyMe.com. You can get a signed copy from that website, and it's also available on Amazon.com. Excellent, excellent. Let's talk about flags. Should we? Let's do it. Red, Red flags. flags. Okay. So I, I, being in a relationship now, but single, and and I, I, my marriage was we just weren't connected. But he was a great man, right? So mm -hmm. it's really difficult to decide you want a divorce when, like, if somebody's hitting you or you're being abused, we are brought up to know that that's wrong. And the world just will stand by you when you feel like that's not the right relationship for you because, well, you have these outer, I mean, this is really personal, right? right. But you have these mm -hmm. outer bruises. But when it's two in the morning and you feel like you're the only one in the world, and you're laying next to somebody, like I've talked to people and you're like, oh my gosh, like, what am I right. doing? I'm the only one in the world that feels this way. I think those women and maybe men, they then start going, well, I can't, I can't get in my head like that every night. Right. So they start, well, I'm not being beat. And the red flags become a little more silent, like not as bright red. Well, their their list is off, right? They they're non negotiables. Right. They don't know what the non negotiables are. So, what do what do we talk about? What do we tell people? Or what's the guidance here for those people that don't want to repeat that history of staying in a relationship that's not so bad? Right. Yeah. Like, what about those great mediocre relationships? Like, well, it's right. better than being alone. Right. Is it? That's, that's the, you know, if somebody was saying that to me, I would ask them, is it better being, being alone? Like, if we really listen to our internal dialogue and our internal compass, it doesn't really lie. So the problem is 
not what we know, it's what we do with what we know or lack mm. thereof. A lot yeah. of times we'll see the fizzle, we'll feel something isn't right, we'll think, okay, you know, and it's not just the, the moment where things don't feel right, no, but it's this internal, hey, this person is emotionally abusing me or they're mentally neglectful and we find a way to be okay with it, that's the problem. So like learning to love yourself and value yourself goes hand in hand with expecting to have a certain type of experience with your significant other and being okay with that because it's it's really us doing it to ourselves a lot of times this dialogue only happens with ourselves we don't share it because we pacify it oh it's not that bad you know or they aren't hitting me and you know that type worse, of dialogue. we have that conversation in our head and then we fill yeah. in the gaps of that person having right. the conversation back i hear that a lot with clients and i'm like they're like, they're like, but I know this is what he's going to say. I was like, but you don't. So right. I love what you're saying that it, it keeps, you keep bringing it back to that personal relationship with yep. yourself. And so if you're not receiving the relationship you want, it's a great time to look within. Absolutely. Yeah. So what are, what are some good ways that we can take time for ourselves? I love that. Okay. I love that self care list. Yes. I'm I'm just gonna go and, and pick some of my faves from the yes, self-care please. list. Because I kind of just we have a lot of new listeners. I just wanna keep some of the these points are just we Good. have to we, we have, have to like fun. rework them yeah, because we want to talk, mention them again. Yeah. Okay. So just I brainstorm some of these and I have a self care log where I, you know, prompt people to do about one to three activities a month. Um, one of them is meditate. The other is, you know, buy beautiful flowers or a plant because they bring good energy. Um, try a new hobby or activity. Eat something indulgent and, like, get out of your head about it. You know, just I'm enjoy. really good at that one. Um, <laughs> I would say write a love letter to yourself. You know, we, we tell – we have so much negative self-talk, but we don't offset that enough with mm -hmm. positive self-talk. So writing a love letter to yourself or a note um, – one of the last ones that I say is say no without explaining yourself because that's we, hard to I, do. A lot of people struggle with that and you get wrapped up in the stress of whatever you're creating to make it okay for you to say no. Oh my God. Um, what else? Um, I said, remove all negative people from your social media feeds because that's just, it's such a draining type of experience to get online and just see people that are, taking away rather than pouring in so that's just a few there are 20 in there but that's and that a goes few. back to your point of surrounding yourself with those like-minded people right that you yep. said in the beginning that started this whole thing yeah you know that when you put yourself in that kind of loving environment amazing stuff starts to be created yeah within and then without oh absolutely I see what you did there that's that's interesting <laughs> <laughs> so so basically you bring up social media and, and eliminating all the caca mm -hmm. is social media like so i i joined a dating website because i'm not you know we're all we're all connected and who's going out i mean i would love that but you know so right. is social media helping the singles be choice or destiny or are they feeding into it ending up with what you get like where what's your take on social media and love swipe left swipe left oh yeah. um it's 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 doing whatever you're doing so it's really feeding off of the way that you present yourself and the way that you're showing up if you're showing up you know as the good time girl or someone not to be taken seriously and that could show up in various ways it just depends on the receiving you know party then that's what you're going to get if you're showing up and i talked about this earlier with Aaron, but it's like you show up to the office in one way and you go to cocktail hour in a different way. There are different goals for both of those activities. Mm -hmm. So social media can be an amazing place because it expands our reach and you never know who you'll meet and what kind of dialogue you start up and where that can lead. There's been a lot of, you know, I, I have two friends who've gotten married from people they met off, off of social media and yeah. a dating website. Um, so it can be a very beautiful thing, but what's, what is your intention and how are you conducting yourself? You're, right. you're going to pretty much get what you give with that whole thing. So, you know, it can be a deterrent, but I think we give it a little too much power for what it does. It really 
you know, manifest who we are and how we're engaging in it. It's not, you know, social media doesn't use us, we use it. So, so it's not like it. Facebook, the reuniting of high school sweethearts broke up the marriage. Facebook didn't break up the marriage. The marriage had a breakdown and then that was the result. Do you think? Well, yes. You know, yes. And, and Facebook may be the tool to exacerbate that. Like if you're a crazy stalker, Facebook just makes that easier. But you know what? We were stalking people before Facebook. Like yeah. it just, we can't, we can't what do say you mean? that. <laughs> well, I don't know. You know, what like, about even remember caller ID? Like when that first came out, I was like, well, yeah. there you go. You can't even ring once to see right. if he answers and hangs up. They know. Right. All the stuff exactly. Did. I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. Wow. I know. <laughs> How do you deal with, um, how do you deal with the merging of family and friends? Like you just celebrated your year anniversary mm -hmm. and I just saw that you have to go on to her site and see her wedding photos. Oh, I mean, stunning. And Thank it was you. great because ev there was just so everybody was having so much fun. And I, I noticed, I can't tell who's friends with who it's That's like those cool. weddings where, and I don't know if this happened, but it's the weddings where like, they don't say sit on either side. You just sit. And mm -hmm. I just, and I just love that. So how, how did you and Ed m merge your friends or you guys met in college? So maybe that wasn't as big of an issue. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think we're, we're both people who kind of, you can kind of take us along and, and have a good time. You know, sometimes you, you're with a spouse or a significant other who might be a little shy or, you know, a little socially awkward. And so you kind of have to kind of, police them everywhere we we're not really those people so right. i think when you run into good energy you just kind of all make it work and you know families kind of work it out and families are important to both of us and you know they they each love us and love us for each other so it's a lot of really good energy and we're blessed to have that because everybody doesn't you know i've heard no, horror stories. it's true um, you know, I have friends who have horror stories. So, you know, we're blessed to have that experience. And, you know, you kind of take it for what it is. As things arise, you know, you figure out who handles what and who addresses what, depending on what it is. And then you just make it work. Cool. Excellent. Why do you think, you know, in kind of this day and age, it's so easy to be successfully single? Like if this was the 1950s, you know, mm -hmm. that's a horse of a different color. Why do you think in this day and age, it's so easy for women to really, you know, stay in the pain or the suffering of being successfully single? You know, I don't even know that there's one answer to that. I just feel like there's a lot of things going on. I feel like um, we're, we're a little jaded. You know, I, I really am kind of fighting against people who, you know, wag their finger at people wanting to be in a relationship or wanting to be married. We're getting to be very cynical as a society. We're getting to be very cold, you know, wanting to replace human connection with all these other things and not really valuing it the way that we used to. Um, yeah. And also just conditioning of you know, bad behavior, Be bad behavior nowadays gets a lot of attention. And this is for men and women. It gets a oh, lot of yeah. attention. And so we get celebrated for our bad behavior. And so what we don't realize is that we're conditioning ourselves to really connect to this bad behavior or these bad thoughts or, you know, bad habits. And those are some of the roadblocks that get in the way. And we're shunning people who have issues. We're shunning people who want to see a therapist. And so these things that people are going through, whether it's personal things or traumas or whatever the case may be, they can't even step out of themselves or don't feel comfortable enough to step out of themselves to ask for help. So we're like just piling on the crap. And so that is, you know, funneling down to what may keep us separate from connecting to someone. So it could be a, a variation of things. Everyone has their own story, but I know that there's a lot of things happening that we're allowing to take the place of the basics. And I think if we talk about old times, there was a lot less crap. <laughs> for well, lack of or, yes, and they didn't talk about the crap. Like we, there's no filter on us now. And so mm -hmm. they probably, I don't want to speak for the 1950s, but I will. <laughs> but you know, I just, I feel like they just did, we all there kind of just standard. followed. The we, you, just, you did this, you, you got go, married, you blah, blah, blah. Not even everybody went to college right. back then. Not everybody goes to college now, but 
now it's a little more, you're not an outcast if you don't go to college or you're not an outcast if you do go to college, like a w woman in college, <gasps> you know, back then and um, a woman who smokes <gasps> back then. Like, so, you know, some of that we've, we have come a long way, baby. Mm -hmm. but you know, some of it now, I think, have we, have we all men and women just gone so far that we don't even know what true north is but i guess the point is you out we have to figure it out for ourselves yeah absolutely right? and you have to right? figure out you know if you want connection are you willing to do the internal to have that relationship and that connection that you want you know like you just can't sit on your couch you know hoping that the postman drops off your ideal mate you know, there's right. internal and then there's external actions to take right. to receive that. Absolutely. Do you do a lot of work with, I, I got some private texts earlier. Do you take on clients? Like, do you, you know, and we didn't, I know we didn't talk about this ahead of time, but like, do you have groups where people can call in or is there like a membership where people, and I don't know, just do this and, and talk. I mean, I found this very helpful. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know. How do we get more of Stephanie? Give us your brain. I, Give us your brain. I almost want Stephanie as a relationship concierge. Work with me here. Oh, that's nice. I'm launching something. <laughs> I think if we pay Stephanie a reasonable monthly, monthly fee, I can call her and go for anything, not it. just love. No, I love it. Son, parents, pets. I'm calling Stephanie. Every, well, everything. you know, I, and I love, I want to go back to the love letter to self. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things I did at the beginning of my relationship with Warner is like three or four weeks in, I wrote him a love letter. And a couple of weeks ago, I was experiencing some frustration in our relationship. And I, I pulled up that love letter and I reread it. And I was like, oh. Wow. Like, did that reconnect you to what you're feeling? Exactly. Oh. And I think a love letter to ourselves when we keep rereading it, I think that's a mm -hmm. really amazing way to remind yourself who Absolutely. you are and why you're so lovable and why Absolutely. you're so loving. Absolutely. I love that. So that's everyone's homework. Write a love letter to themselves. Absolutely. And Sidebar, Mel, I, Stephanie, I, um, with your I book do, order. Listen, I, I need to do a little hard sell right now. I'm going to okay. do it. I need everyone to buy this book. I'm not going to lie. I need it. I need everyone yeah. to buy this book because great things will happen if we all can be in better relationships. Just not yeah. even just with like the, with romantic, yes, no. but like with yourself, we're, we're not, there wouldn't be as much road rage. We'd be too busy like saying, oh my gosh, I'm so awesome. Look at, I'm a great driver, you know, but like. I think we'd be better parents. I think we'd be better friends. I think we'd be better um, siblings and, and children to parents and stuff. So let's talk about how much does the book cost, Steph? The book is $24.95 on IamSuccessfullyMe.com or Amazon.com. So okay. very See? small for all the knowledge that you get. Sidebar, I do take on clients. People write me all the time. Um, at some point in the near future, I will create some sort of group um, just because it gets difficult to do individuals, but I do take on clients and, um, you know, there's a legitimate contract and we work together for, you know, the number oh, of you, sessions. Oh, well, you're a legit coach. Like, she you're not like a coach. Yeah. After her she's meeting. a yeah. therapist. Like, she's like a legit thing. She's I know. A master. Yeah. She has a <laughs> master's. <laughs> She like went to school longer than both of us put together, probably. Yeah. Well, whatever. So that's fine. We don't we don't need to body shame or mind shame <laughs> ourselves. That's like a big trend right now. And we're going into summer, right? So let's talk body shaming mm -hmm. and dating. Right? So what are you sipping and sharing? I am sipping. Uh, you didn't see, but my husband snuck in a glass of wine for me. So I've been sipping this most of this interview. <laughs> I want wine. I'm gonna get wine. Can you we should. get wine? Who here? Absolutely. By show of hands, who here wants us? To, let's let's just all start drinking wine because then we'll make really great relationship choices. <laughs> we'll drunk text people. Want to? No. Okay. Um, but you have a game, sip and share. So I will go get us some. You do not know about her game? No, but I'm I'm loving this. Bring it on. I'm gonna go get two glasses. Okay. okay. Tell me what the game is, but while she's out of the room, and can we so win it so I win? 
and this is this is called sip and share um a fun way to be nosy it's a conversation starter card game for women and couples it's interchangeable um my goal behind that was creating new relationships or increasing the depths of the current relationships that we have because we're very connected to people seemingly online but we ignore the people in front of us so kind of like bringing it back to the I basics really that. having conversation and you know also getting a breakthrough somewhere you know you you play this game you have you have the intention to have a good time and have fun but I have strategic questions in here to kind of prompt you to think about things in life and connect in a way that you weren't expecting or you know even looking for so that's I love like that. a little okay, so because we need to know where we can get those where can we get those you can get these on iamsuccessfullyme.com love that I they love just, that. So, yeah. You know, I, I think that's really important. I think, you know, I was on a call today with a, a bunch of my practitioners and I got on the call before and she's like, how are you? I'm like, I'm fine. How are you? She's like, I'm fine. And I was like, listen, I'm a little tense. And she goes, I'm mm -hmm. a little overwhelmed, right? So mm -hmm. often we don't really, we miss deep connections yeah. because we're so on the surface and we're so afraid to be really safe being vulnerable. Erin's going to get wine. And just so everyone oh. knows, every time I come to Erin's house and she gives me a glass of wine, it's gone vinegar every time. So oh, I boy. can't wait till she brings up. <laughs> I, I just opened one up and I was like, this is vinegar. And I have a wine fridge. I kid you not. I kid you not. Yikes. I swear. So give, yes. I'm going to play a little sip and share while she's doing her wine okay. thing. So give okay. me a card. Do you have a card? Because you guys are still frozen on my end. So You're I can't kidding. even see. No. Oh, no. How is that possible? I don't know. Do you have the, her cards? I'm not sure. Let's see. Can you just pull one and read it out loud? Me? Yes. Yeah, sure. And okay. I will Let me share. do that. Okay. Let's see here. Brand new pack. Um, yeah, okay. Pack. I want to see what the audience says too. Okay. So this the one audience. says. And if anyone in the audience part. knows how to unfreeze us, like we're moving around and everything. We look good. Maybe I'm going to, let me try to close my thing out and then I'll reopen it. So don't go anywhere. I'm just going to read on my screen. Okay. Wait, can we do the Charlie's <laughs> Age? <laughs> no, never mind. Because if I if I do that, then it'll stop the broadcast. So it's fine. I can, All right. Well, you can see do you want to stop fine. and start again? I mean, we have nine friends on right now. We have no. hundreds of views already. Because we're no, good. No, no, no. I don't want to. I'm really I don't into the sip and share. Please read the card. No, we can do it. Yeah, we can do it. So this is the first question. It says, which one is harder? A, moving on, B, letting go, or C, starting over? Uh, moving on, letting go, starting over. Um, for me, it's always letting go. I, okay. I have the death grip of control of things sometimes. Okay. And especially with people. I will hold on to a person until that relationship is dead in the water. Wait, can you? I have to admit something. Yeah. I didn't listen to the question. <laughs> can you ask it again? Yes. Okay. I was still thinking about being frozen. Yeah. Let it go. Let it go. It's all right. Hold me back anymore. Let me read. Okay, Steph, go ahead. Read the question okay. again, Steph. Which one is harder? A, moving on, B, letting go, C, starting over. Letting go. Okay, yeah. so both of them say letting go. Yeah. yeah, we're real treats to be around. <laughs> <laughs> Give us another one. We're always grudging up the past. People should answer okay. in the little text. Yeah, Brandon, Brandon, Brandon. Huh? Hi. Answer that. Which one? Letting go, starting over. I forgot the last one. Is somebody answering? Letting go, starting over, moving on. Okay. Let's ask it. I'm loving this. 
Letting go. Oh, my cousin said letting go. She's with us. Letting she go. Because she's family. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, Jade played this game the other day. Oh, Brandon said letting go. Thanks. Yeah, see, why are we all oh. just having trouble letting go? Jade played this game with the friends the other day. And letting she go. Said it was Nancy's amazing. Letting go. Nancy, let it go. Letting go. Oh, Look, Cassandra. it's a big one. Yep. Okay. So why do you guys say letting go? Why? What's the reason behind that? Honestly, for me, I feel like I need to convince, this is going to be so insightful, mm -hmm. so scary, but I feel like I need to convince people wh why I feel that way. And if they're not agreeing with me, I want, I want to, le I'm fine leaving, leaving them. But I need to leave them on a term where their communication is so essential for me. They don't have to agree with me, but I, if I think they're misunderstanding where I'm coming from, I can't let it go. My mother okay. said letting go. Of course. Mommy, I got this from you, clearly. Yes. I think for me, letting go is such a problem because of my real sense of loyalty. Like, I never mm. want to leave a person down. I never want to leave them felting like they're unloved. So I, I hold on to things a little too long. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I like wow. this game. It's a okay. great game. Yeah. It's a great okay. game. More, more questions. More. Okay. Let's see. Um, oh, good point, Jennifer. People. Thank you, Edmund Lee. <laughs> oh, Connie. Oh, Connie. Connie is on the phone. I love Connie. Do you want to? Do you want to say hi? I think Ed wants oh, to say let's hi. Oh, Ed. Let's see him real quick. Dun, 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 I just got the connection. Dun, dun, dun. You didn't tell me that. Oh, my God. <laughs> Listen, sometimes I'm a little behind the game. So you realize that the Edmund Lee that is, I always talk about Stephanie Lee's. is Stephanie Lee's husband. Well, good yeah. thing forensic science is not your background. <laughs> good thing you're good at what you do, and we don't good have thing. you on the law force, like law enforcement. Good thing. Um. Do we want to tag? I want to type. Hi, Ed. Greetings. I'm glad. Uh, My friend Brandon said, hi, husband. Isn't he so cute? He's really cute. I know. They look very cute. <laughs> Brandon and I work. Uh, Brandon and I. Ed, Edmund and I work together. I love that. I know, as you know. Can we just with get Chad. on to another question? Yes, yes, yes. Bring on another it's question. OK, so it says, there's an old saying that says it's better to be with a man who loves you more than to be with a man who you love more. Do you agree? I hate this. This was a big thing. I love my mother. She's a great mother. But once my mom said that exact thing, she's like, it's better if he loves you more than you mm -hmm. love him. And it threw me for, I'm like, what? Well, no, why can't we just love each other the equal amount? How old were you when you said that to her? Well, I had the conversation in my head. See, oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So now I just That's honor great, myself. Jen. That's great. You're yeah. telling people not to have conversations in your head, and you just did. I did. I had a con. Did I your mom even say that, or just no, one she, of your personalities? No, my mom said that to me. And but has I had else? to go through a process, and I thought it's neither. I'm not going to. I'm not going to, mm -hmm. you know, believe either. I'm going to come to a partnership. And I think that's why mine and Warner's relationship is, you know, a foundation of, of real respect and love because I'm not playing that game in my head. Right. What do you think, Steph? Um, I mean, I understand it. You know, the whole saying comes from the fact that, um, you know, women tend to give more emotionally. And, you know, even if you weren't that into him, you'd probably, or into him as, as much as he is, you'd probably still meet him at the same place emotionally. And, you know, whether that's right or wrong, I, I get it. I understand why they say it. That's not ideal for me um, because I just don't want to live in that type of space. Right. Um, but it's something that I kept hearing, especially a lot of older women, women say and really believe. So, you know, the few times I have played it, everybody kind of, all the women kind of understand the concept of that. Um, yeah. But yeah. ideally want, you know, a mutually beneficial love. Okay. Yeah. Edmund, what do you make of all this? You know, I, I watched my mom and my, uh, 
aunts, my family play this game in, Memphis, in Mississippi, well, Memphis. And this question came up, and now my family's obviously from the South, and they all said the same thing across the board. They all said to get a man who loves you more um, than, than you love him. And it's just an old, old school saying. And my cousins that are younger than me were there, they're married too. They were, you know, kind of like, that's what, that's what my mom taught me. That's what my mom taught me. And what's funny, my cousin said, well, I wonder, and this kind of opened the whole floodgates up. She said, I wonder what else I've learned from you that I have adopted without even knowing. And it right. was interesting because it was three generations in the room. And it was interesting to hear. And I heard some stuff I didn't want to hear. Honestly, it's, we need to get some more of these questions going so you can see what I mean. I love that. So, okay, I just need Jade. Jade. Jade just said, Ed's creeping. And I don't know what that means. <laughs> like he's in the back, kind of like stalking in the back. Like, like he's going her. ham on you? No, that's not true? No. no. It's the opposite of going ham. <laughs> oh, OK. Oh, my gosh. Do you know that saying? He's going ham on you? OK, whatever. I'll tell you later. I, I know all the cool things to say now. <laughs> Whatever. Look, look at, wait. So everybody needs to know because they're, I'm frozen, right? So Ed and I are in a company together with our business partner, Chad. And I am so Caucasian on some of these calls that I, I now officially know what will crack him up during meetings. And it's a combination of me being like an older 48 year old, like I'm 48 and I'm a very old soul, clearly everyone knows. And then I'm so Caucasian. I'm such a white girl. And I now say things to just throw them off in a meeting. Like, Ed, how funny was today? Ed. We're on the phone with the owner of AfricanAncestry.com. Oh God. And oh God. I'm sorry she just you, Ed. <laughs> oh, we're gonna, we're gonna, we got people answering questions. I'm not even gonna. Okay, get let's get back to the question. I'm just saying, she had to politely tell me I wasn't from oh. Africa, and I, I pretended <laughs> that I was shocked. And Ed's like, I went, I'm shocked, and I called Ed later. I said, I'm just such a good dancer. Ed, I feel for you because I worked with this woman for like ten years. I feel for you. I honestly. That's Honestly, it was a great call, and, and I, we can help them, and that's a really cool can thing. Can we get back to Steph? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, sure. But, but Jennifer had a good comment, though. Uh, she said, heartache comes when we, uh, we as women love more. In the other hand, you can't get rid of the guys that love you more, which is worse, Stephanie. Oh, get, which is worse, getting rid of the guy who loves love you more. more? She's like, okay, heartache comes when women, we as women love more. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, what if you can't get rid of the guy who loves you more, a.k.a. Stalker? Welcome to our Christmas party discussions. Steph, this is my <laughs> cousin asking, and we've played these games. We've played sip and share. You have to, when you come in August, I mm -hmm. will we arrange will, a big sip and share. That's a great event. Yes, everybody in New Jersey and New York in drivable distance, Stephanie is going to be with us for this event Ed and I are doing and Chad. And we can play sip and share. Love it. And 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 then it'll be fun. Okay, so it will be we're fun. wrapping up, right? I don't want to wrap up. Okay. Do you want to wrap up? Let's do one more question. Wrap okay. up spoils the fun. So I'm not even. I I'm I have to be unfrozen. I mean, I actually like got my hair cut for this thing. But you're I only don't, frozen. Thank you. No, everybody so thinks I'm frozen. Watch, Brandon. Am I frozen? Yeah, you're frozen. Yeah. Jen, am I frozen? Hmm. Do you see the more... look I'm giving you right now? Ask one more question, Steph. Okay. So if your best friend or sister needed a surrogate from you or without that, they'd never have a child, would you do it? Yes. No, because I don't have a uterus. Answer. Boop. Okay. Well, I what if you did have? I had a hysterectomy, so I can't answer this I question. I would be your surrogate. You would do that for me? Yes. You're so nice. Okay, You're wait. I'm gonna add. I'm gonna ask one more spicy one since this is oh. a late night. Before we um, finish. Let's well, see. we're gonna finish, but then I'm going back on Facebook Live because I got my hair cut, and so people need to see it. Okay. Let's Stephanie hates me. For Sonia. 
So Sonia, we're not frozen for you? A couple of people said they're coming. Oh, okay. So here's a good one. If you could have sex with one celebrity, who would you choose? I already kissed George Clooney, so does that count? No, that's really sad. that's a story time. I did. I was thinner, people, so don't be grossed out. I was thinner when I kissed George Clooney. <laughs> can it? Can I mean, it there wasn't like making out, all but time, it was good. Because mine would be Carrie Grant. Really? Oh yeah. Okay. Who? Is mine anybody would be Richard Simmons? I can't. <laughs> it is not <laughs> Richard. Simmons. It's Richard Simmons. I love him. It takes a second. They're We're right, they're frozen, right. so you can't <laughs> see my face right now. <laughs> But my I face said, no. horror. No. Okay. So Jen and I used Melvin. to be Richard Simmons publicists, so I just feel like Richard needs a little love these days. So um, Sonia says Mel Gibson. Nice. Okay. But Mel Gibson Young. after past the passion debacle or before? Oh. Right? Before. I'm just saying, like, huh. making out with a celebrity with all that controversy sometimes isn't sexy. Or it could be a little nifty. Jay says Killmonger. Jason, oh, oh I nice. My family has such yeah. Channing Tatum. He's single. You know that she, he's single now. He waited yes. on me the other day, and Don't by the other my... day I mean seven Don't months ago. But still, <laughs> you're still holding it. Before Sonia says before, good. We got right. Jason okay. Strange. Got Channing Tatum. I know. Okay, that's a good question. Your sister Wait, said Edmund. Edmund. Okay. Who would you, Ed? Who would you? I'm not in this part. No, if you're going to know, play the game. I'm going for Oprah all the time. Oprah, really? Yeah, really. Yeah, look at Stephanie chugging. She's like, go, 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 go. Oprah. You want to go like Stedman on? Stop. That's just. Steph wants to meet Oprah. What better way? Stop. Instead of going ham on her, you'll go Stedman on her. You can't. You can't, you can't, like, that's like, you can't have sex with Oprah. You just can't. Oh my God. I'm going to say no. Think again. Strategic move. Strategic move. I don't know. I feel weird and dirty now. <laughs> I'm going to be and honest. I don't, that answer doesn't do it for me at all. So, Stephanie, if yeah. there's one thing that you want everyone to remember from our conversation today, the highs and the lows, what would that be? What would the one thing you want them to remember about your book and who you are? Um, that my persona is always looking to help people in the most fun way possible. I don't want, you know, the, I don't want to, cont to continue to Lord too much wine. I don't want to continue to perpetuate the stereotype that having to work on yourself is a scary thing or it's a negative thing. Um, I want people to know the significance of relationships, most importantly, the one with yourself, um, and want people to engage in a new experience of the book because it's unlike any other. You know, we have self help, we have fiction, but we rarely get a mashup in a workbook. So, it's true. Really breathing really breathing new life into the genre of being a relationship expert and just someone loving to work with people and watch people be their best selves. That's so agreed. Cool. Again, how do they get the book? And, and Jade yeah. wants to come over and I say, yeah. yes, come on. Why can't we, can we, I, Oh, my mom says, please. Okay. She didn't say, please give the title of the book again. And where you can get it. Yes. The title of the book is called Successfully Single, Choice or Destiny, and you can get it at IamSuccessfullyMe.com or Amazon.com. Beautiful. And this is Mom, are you going like. to buy a book? Mommy, are you going to buy a book? Mommy? Answer. And if you guys... I call her Mommy still. Buy, you know, buy a couple because this would be a, a great gift. And also because of the workbook aspect, this is not something you want to lend because right. you're going to do your own work. You're going to keep it private. So you definitely want to give someone, it's a quick read. You know, a lot of times we don't have time to read anymore and we're running and busy. It's a quick read, but it's very valuable and you get a lot out of it. So buy Does it just come in hard copy with... or is there a digital version too or no? There's a Kindle. Oh, there is. Oh, so yeah. like people could start reading this tonight. Yeah. Oh, my absolutely. mom said she bought a book. Thanks, oh, thank Eileen. you. Thanks, thank Mama. You. Thanks, Mama. I will give her a hug when I meet her in August. 
Yes, you're going to meet her for sure. You'll see that Eileen Saxton. Everybody needs awesome. to be friends with Eileen Saxton. Everybody go friend her. <laughs> She's going to have like 85 million friend requests. I know. Do you think we should start like, I mean, Jade has a great idea. She's like, oh my gosh, I should have gone to Aaron's house, which is great because I, I don't know Jade. Does Jade live? Right. Oh, and I don't Jade know where lovely. Jade lives. <laughs> okay. But but I'm assuming we like Jade. I mean, I personally we love like Jade. We yeah. love Jade. All right, we love Jade. Yeah. It's like love, love, love. And so she's like, we should have like a live round table and do the workbook and stuff. Fine. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You want to do that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, we can wait a couple of or weeks. Or at least people can share. Books. Yeah, we, should do we a can do a round table discussion. Do you want to like start a doing a weekly sip and share? And Brandon and Mario from um, Lady Savant, and I know they're on here, they get sponsors all the time. So they get like companies to like give yes, them. Yes, Jen, we have time for one more question. My cousin, they're, my family's so needy, but in a good way. And they're also <laughs> darn cute, which you would know if we weren't frozen. So let's I have know. one more question. From me? Jen, did you buy a book? What? You want one more suggestion? Jen, question? Jen, Jen, Jen. If you buy a book, I will buy those earrings from you from Darling Red, which everybody should go to Darling Red. That's my cousin's jewelry online oh. company. So why don't we do, why don't we do like a little bundle? Jen, I'm going to text you, Stephanie, and you can do like a loving yourself gemstone with book thing. Nice. She said she likes it. She's like, yes. Okay, Steph, give us another question. Okay. Um, let's see. <laughs> Trying to see. What's more important, great sex or a great connection? <sighs> sex. <laughs> um, did you hear my big sigh? Yes. Uh, why do I have to pick? Wait, I know what to say. <laughs> I know. I feel like this is a trick question. I think if you have great connection, you have great sex. Oh, God. I think how people dance is how they have sex. That's my I first thing. That's my first thing. I was going to do a college, like, paper on that. That's a good idea. Yeah, but I didn't. Um, <laughs> but I think that... <laughs> My cousin just went crickets for a minute. I was comfortable. <laughs> I know, Jen, listen, it's hard to, like, get her, like, hung up on things. But when you stump her, you stump her. You know? Yeah, it is a tie. Yeah. I, I, I would go for connection because I think with connection, there's great sex. And I think there's books you can buy and you can have those conversations. Oh, that's so cute. You're, but, like, teaching. But... But you guys just <laughs> talked for like loving yourself for ten minutes, I and I didn't even nothing. mention. I don't need to. Teach. I didn't even mention the word, the M word at all. So if like if you could do all that and have a great connection, and then, and what about open relationships? Wait, what? I'm sorry, what? M word. Masturbation. <laughs> Marriage. I don't know. I didn't know what the M word. I I knew what the M word was. <laughs> My mom said, I want to buy a book, but I want Stephanie to sign it. So you go, got it, girl. Go you got web, it. Go to the website oh, and she'll send if, you one. The signed copies are on IamSuccessfullyMe.com. So those will be signed and personalized. Yes. Perfect. And my friend yep. from Texas, like, texted me and she, Texas texted. But you say that five times. Texas. I and she that. was like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe this. I love this. You know, and she she already bought a book. And it's, oh, thank it's you. fun. Yay. So, yes. So I can't wait. But everybody, so this, I'm looking forward to the round table because I can't wait to hear what everybody thinks about the characters and who, who they identify with and so on and so forth. It's going to be a yes. lot of fun. And you know what? I, I will have my, <laughs> you're all in for a treat. I'm doing it. I'm going to invite <laughs> my mom to the round table and she's going to give you her opinion of all these women. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We're still frozen, Jen. So, <laughs> and and right, Katie, Katie's here. Yay, Hi, Katie. Katie. Well, I can keep staying on, but it, if people want to go, then that's that's fine. But you know, Yay. oh, she's like, I, look, we just you, had that. 
Can Aaron. we do one more question? Because I like this. Mm -hmm. I got one for you. It's called create your own question. So, Aaron, who are you what talking to? Hold up, hold up, hold up. You. So, you create your own question. What question would you ask everybody? Why hasn't everybody bought a copy of the book yet? <laughs> Perfect question. I like that. It's a great question. Great. No, I I think my perfect my question would be what do you need in your life that you don't have? But it's got to be an either or question. All of them are No, I just want them to fill in the blank. Okay. And they already answered it. The second you heard that question, everybody intuitively a word came up, whether you like the word or not, and it could be laundry, but it doesn't matter, but like Everybody, like, what in your life is missing that you want? Somebody said sex. Somebody said love. Somebody said, you know, intimacy. Somebody said adventure. Somebody said mystery. Somebody said, you know, hmm, other stuff. That's what I would say. Good question. Hi, Stell. Stability. Nice. This is Jen's a mini. She's I got know. it going on. Peace and quiet. Really? Are you a mom? And that's why you need peace and quiet? <laughs> Who is that? I can't, I can't, I can't that. see. It's your sister. What did she say? Peace, peace and, quiet. and quiet. Oh, she has three kids. One of yeah. which is all I knew that two. was her sister. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I get that. I have Hi, one Ryan. and I still need it. Hi, but I have Chloe, yeah. who's like a crazy... Yeah, so... <laughs> Well, let's let's show the book one more time. Ed, could you post it on the feed? It David won't allow Corbin me to post is it. watching. David Corbin is watching. And Hello. so Hi. So successfully yeah. <laughs> of three. Yeah, recently. So successfully single. Destiny or or choice or destiny. Yep. Right? Somebody just said, <laughs> I want a maid in my life so I can read Steph's book. That's well, so cute. <laughs> So listen, if you guys are interested in the sip and shares, please go on IamSuccessfullyMe.com. If you're interested in the book, please. Go there so you can get also, a signed copy. Yes. Also, add me as another a format. You guys can add me as a friend too, so that I can start dialoguing with everyone watching. Yeah, because we're really going to like do this. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I think I you make us want to be funny. <laughs> Steffi's sister. Yay, Steffi's sister. <laughs> Steffi's sister rocks. Um, but I think this would be fun, yeah. right? Like a little weekly. Yeah. Girls like night, Girls Night In. Right. Girls Night In. Yeah. Girls Night In. So, Edmund, will you do me a favor? Because my mom keeps telling me that when Steph lifts up the book, it's backwards, and we, we know that. So can you just post it in there so everyone can see how pretty the cover is? Or, it won't, or it won't post post my video it. testimonial that I did in the very hot Tampa two weeks ago. And I look like a little, it was like very glossy. It won't, it won't let us post um, the image on the uh, thread. So oh. he's just going to post the website and then we'll there post it, the there video. It is. Good, good boy. And then come back and friend Stephanie and share your experience of reading the book and stephanie we'll have you back on our show i mean you've been a great yeah. guest yeah, we love having so you. we it's love we love having you we love yeah. having you on the show and um we're yeah. gonna submit this for a video award emmy not an emmy <laughs> no we're not quite up at emmy maybe an enema <laughs> we might be able to submit it for an enema not an emmy but we're just a few letters away from getting it right all right and being unfrozen <laughs> And on being on Frozen, let it go, let it go. Don't, don't, don't I sound like a Disney person? Totally. Can't stand it back anymore. I wish you could. I, I can sing it. I can sound like Ethel Merman. Like, please don't. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm positive. All right. Well, I guess that's right, the end like, of the Jen and Aaron show. All right. Oh, my mom's still like holding up to a mirror. Mommy, let it go, let it go. Well, Stephanie, <laughs> then she, she can't. Hold the book up anymore. <laughs> let it go. Let it go. So, <laughs> click the link on board. <laughs> okay, so thank you. <laughs> thank you. And um, we 
look forward to having you on again. Yes. Thank you this guys so much. Video. This was a great video. Thank you, everybody. Go All by right. the book. Goodbye. Bye. Good night. Good night.